Welcome to Board Game Publisher. Today, I will discuss making a contract with your game designer. That is also a very important aspect of the whole process of publishing the board game. So, when you have a game designer that has a prototype that you want to publish, uh, you have to make sure at some point that you make a contract with the game designer before you commit fully to the development and to the publication of the game. Basically, the contract will guarantee that your rights as a publisher and your obligations as a publisher are clear and set on paper, and that the rights and obligations of the game designer are clear and set on paper as well. And there are a lot of things to cover in that uh, contract. Uh, it's usually called a licensing contract because you license the ID the, of the game from the designer so that you can publish it with your board game company. So first thing first, you are making the contract as your company, not as yourself, that's an important thing. And the board game designer will make the contract as themselves, or if they are incorporated, as their company. That is uh, very much acceptable. The different aspects that you must cover into the contract are as follows. The first thing is, of course, uh, how will the game designer be uh, compensated for the efforts uh, into creating the game? Uh, some game designer want to have a fixed amount of money and then the game is not their problem anymore. That is one way to do it. Uh, you put that into the contract, you agree on a sum, and then uh, you make the contract uh, signed by both parties. Another way to do it is uh, by paying royalties to the designer based on the number of copies sold. Um, you have to be very careful and to agree with the designer on the basis for the computation of these royalties. Uh, you can base the royalties on the total gross sales amount from your company, or you can base the royalties on the public price of the, the game to the general public. Uh, because when you sell a game, you will sell it to the distributor, the distributor will sell it to the retailer, and the retailer will sell it to the customer. And so with these two intermediaries, or maybe even more intermediaries, because you can have sub-distributors in between, the price that your company sells the game and the price that um, everyone pays to get the game from the retailer shelves is not the same. So when making a contract for royalties, you have to be very clear about what is the amount that will be used as the basis for calculating the royalties. Another option that also happens is that the designer may want to have a fixed amount of money per copy sold or even per copy produced. Uh, that's another way to do it. All of these are perfectly acceptable as long as your company, your board game publishing company, and the designer agree on these terms. That's very important. You have to be in agreement and you have to put that in writing on a contract that both parties sign. That will avoid you a lot of trouble afterwards and a lot of dispute also, because if you discuss all of the, the difficult things before you start the project, you will have less bad surprises along the way. So that's, that's quite important. Another thing that can happen uh, if you are a very large publishing company, you may have some um, designers on the payroll. Uh, that is something that you have to uh, take into consideration when hiring people. Uh, you have to put that into their contract. What happens if they come with a game design that you decide to publish? Uh, in some cases, the contract will state that whatever the designer makes while they are working uh, on your company belongs to the company. That's one way to do it. Others are more generous and the contract states that if the designer designs a game, the company may opt to publish it. They may even have precedence and first right of refusal before the designer can present it to other companies. That's also something that can be put into the, the hiring contract that you have with your uh, employees. And in some cases, uh, you also have a provision for royalties that will be based on the number, number of copies sold or on the gross amount of sales or on the net amount of sales to the general public. So all of these, again, are acceptable, but you have to make sure that uh, all parties are in agreement and that everything is put into writing before you start. Otherwise, you will have a lot of very complex issues to solve later on, and you don't want to, to do that. Once you have the general agreement on how you will pay the game designer, you have to make an agreement about uh, exactly the extent of the rights that you are getting from the designer. Uh, in some cases, the designer will be very specific and say, you have the right to publish the game and nothing else. 
in some other cases, it will be extended and you will be able to make extensions even if they don't come from the same designer and uh, publish this extension on the game. And the designer, the original designer, may or may not get royalties on the sale of expansions as well. That's something you need to cover as well. Another important aspect is all the um, the extra things, uh, everything that is not just the board games. Uh, do you intend to make an application? Do you intend to make a web version or a computer version of the game? If yes, you need to have that cover into the contract and make sure that you can do it. And it may be a separate contract. Some famous designers like uh, Rainer Knizia uh, make sure when they do a contract for uh, licensing that they separate a lot of different things. So if I want to license a game from uh, Dr. Knizia, uh, he will tell me, okay, you can have the license for the French language or for the English language or for the Italian language or whatever, but he will limit it by language. Also, he will tell me, you have the right to publish the game, but no extra products, so no application, no computer rights, no rights for t-shirts or books or whatever, or, or maybe even uh, movies that would be based on the on the game and on the intellectual property of the game. So all of this needs to be negotiated separately. It can be in the same contract, of course, but you have to make sure that the extent of the rights that you are licensing from the designer are made very clear into the contract. Some designers uh, may perceive this as adversarial, and some publisher may also be uncomfortable about discussing all of these issues and making a contract before you get started. But Actually, uh, making a contract is not adversarial. Uh, it's not saying to the uh, designer that you do not trust it. Uh, on the contrary, this is making all of the aspects of your future collaboration very clear so that everyone knows exactly what to expect, so that the bounds and the obligations uh, of each of the parties are clearly stated and you have no surprises. And trust me, you do not want surprises once you start publishing your, your game because once you have an agreement with the designer, you will develop the game, you will commission art, you will get the game produced, you will pay the logistics to move the game to the distributor, and that will be a lot of money that you put on the table, that will be a lot of effort that you put on the table, that will be a lot of effort by third parties as well, because you will have partners into this. And if all of a sudden someone changes their mind and say, oh no, I don't want to publish it anymore, you are in a very, very bad situation. So you need a contract so that all of the agreements are set on paper. I cannot stress this enough, and I will say it again, you absolutely need to make a contract with your game designer. If you think this was useful, hit the like button. If you did not find it useful, hit the dislike button. And please leave me a comment so that I know how to improve on this. Uh, if you want to make sure to not miss the next episode, hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell. Thank you.